Since there isn't a whole lot happening on the radio propagation wise. Six, nine, twelve. Figured I'd take a different kind of spin around the band today. You know what this is? This is a Midland 13885. I've already done a video on it. It's the uh, improved version of the 13880. Uh, fixed some of the bugs that the 13880B had. But this isn't about this. It's about all the other stuff that Midland used to make. When Midland started selling CB stuff around 1967, they started with one tube type base station. But they eventually expanded. Now, strangely enough, I don't have any Midland mobiles here. I gave one away to a buddy of mine, and uh, he has no idea what happened to it since he moved. But uh, Midland eventually branched out. They sold walkie-talkies, tons of walkie-talkies. See that one there, I've actually got two of them in the box, bought at a ham fest. But Midland branched out into other stuff. They branched out into scanners. This was a premium scanner at the time. Uh, it was $250 in the 1974 Olson catalog. And they also branched out into ham gear. The one on the left, as you can see, is a Midland 13500. That's a 2 meter 10 watt radio. This one's the 13509, which is a, a 10 watt 220 megahertz radio. Midland was quick to jump on 220 gear. And this one, the 13505 was their best radio of the era. Uh, it features a zero center meter to, uh, to set it on frequency and it also has a built-in SWR bridge. Now back when this was made in August of 1973 uh, if you wanted to check the SWR on your uh, two meter antenna you had to borrow somebody's bird uh, the bird watt meter, which was the standard then and is the standard now. And this one also puts out 30 watts, which was pretty good for a radio of its era. And these are all crystal radios, which means it uh, takes a separate receive and transmit crystal for each channel, just like a lot of CB sets. Now this scanner... The crystals that go in the ham radios are not interchangeable with the ones in the scanners. The ones in the scanners are standard 10.7 megahertz IF. So if you run across one of these, and what made this unusual was the S meter. Now, scanners don't normally come with S meters. The channels on the left are uh, VHF high or VHF low, depending on where you put the crystal. And the channels on the right are all UHF channels. So in 1977, Midland came out with this radio, the 13510, which was one of the earliest fully synthesized 2 meter radios that was on the market. Um, 25 selectable uh, ten, uh, 1 watt or 25 watts output. A later version called the 13510A had a 10 watt output as a middle. That was my first ham radio. And this had everything that you needed for successful operation on the 2 meter band. Uh, with the exception of an auto patch microphone. And of course you could use that. The Drake 1525EM microphone or the Heathkit microphone that went along with it. So the one nice thing about Midland equipment, collecting Midland equipment, is that on the back of it, it'll tell you when it was made. Some of them just say the year, like the scanner says 1974. This says 1971. 
but this says August 1973. I'm not sure what the walkie-talkie has. I'm too lazy to get it out of the box to look at it. So anyway, there you go. Nowadays, I'm not sure. I don't think Midland makes uh, CB stuff anymore. Uh, I'd have to look it up. But uh, I do know that they um, are very big in the commercial commercial two-way radio market, and that's where they uh, that's where they made their money. What they made their money in the CB market uh, 50 years ago. All right. So if you see Midland stuff at the flea market, like these walkie-talkies, they were five bucks a piece. Uh, Usually all you have to do is put batteries in them and uh, they when uh, they work. These radios here, uh, I have not uh, not changed any of the capacitors in them. So there you have it.